If there's one thing I hear from just about all of you, it's your lack of energy. You feel like your body is shutting down. You're constantly drained, and you just can't figure out why. So today, we are putting an end to your exhaustion. There's an energy crisis in America, and I'm not talking about the price of gas. When it comes to my energy, I feel like a walking zombie. From all corners of the country, you sent me your biggest complaint on video. Everybody else looks like they're going 95 miles per hour. I feel like I'm going too. You posted on my Facebook page. Fatigue, not enough energy. I'm the exact opposite of the Energizer Bunny. I'm never going. You sent me tweets on Twitter. Feeling tired, lack of energy. I feel like I'm yelling on fumes all day long. By midday, my energy's gone and my eyes just glaze over. Well, I heard you loud and clear. And I say, it's time to rev up, America. Today, the one simple solution to put an end once and for all to your energy crisis. Julie, Ann, and Kathy are three women who represent a cross-section of America. Now, each has a different complaint about their energy. See if Julie's story sounds familiar. I'm a full-time mom with a full-time job, and I spend most of my life running around with my kids. I need my energy back. A lot of crying in the background there. Yeah, yeah. very <laughs> so, stressful mornings. <laughs> so what's most responsible for crashing your energy? Uh, that would be my three very active children, Jason, Christian, and Ryan. Their schedules are have me going crazy. It's uh, give you a glimpse into my day. Yeah. We all get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I have to get them ready for where they need to be and get myself ready to be at work on time every day. Um, when we get ready in the morning, when I have to make lunch, I have to get sneakers tied, this, that. We get in the car, I have to drop one at one place, the other one at another place, another one at another place, and get myself to work by 8.30 every morning. It's very draining and exhausting. Yeah, I'm tired hearing it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm tired of saying it. <laughs> so, so when you're low on energy, what happens? What do you do? I kind of get very irritable and moody, and I snap. I snap at my kids, and I feel very guilty. Um, you know, if one needs a shoe tied and the other one needs a bowl to eat cereal, it just, you know, I get very snappy and angry, and I feel awful about it in the end. What else stresses you out? What, how, what other um, things sap your energy? It could be when I'm on my way to work and there's a lot of traffic, I hit the southern state, and it could be raining just a little bit, and I'm like, people, gas pedal to the right, it's only a little <laughs> bit of rain, let's go, I have to get to work. Or if someone cuts me off, I'm honking my horn. Or it could be if we all get home, it's a very long day, and the kids start fighting, and my husband just walks through the door from work, and I snap at him like, can't you help me? They're fighting. I'm trying to do this. It's just very draining and exhausting. I need my energy back. You want your energy back? <laughs> yes, I want my energy your back. Your story is one picture of what low energy looks like in America. But right. I've got a couple more to tell today. So let me share Anne's story with you. See if this reminds you of anything. I'm a stay-at-home mom to two young children. My mind is running a mile a minute, and my energy level is running on empty. So Anne, what causes your energy to crash? I wake up in the morning and I feel exhausted and I feel very anxious all day and my two children I have the three-year-old and the ten-week-old yeah. and I feel like very anxious because my daughter's constantly pulling on my leg and I'm half you know my little one's always crying and I feel like am I doing the right thing am I doing the wrong thing I feel like I'm a twister so the kids are obviously part of the story yes. from your perspective but do you think you had these same types of energy issues before you had the kids i did as a teenager i always felt very anxious i felt like am i doing the right thing am i saying the right thing the wrong thing i never i've always second guessed myself my anxiousness and when you're anxious and when your energy is sapped yes. with that feeling what do you do about it i there's nothing i really do i just i have a cup of coffee to try to get me going and that's it <laughs> Uh, there's nothing that, that has helped me with anything right. so far. So. so I want you to, you know, because I think these wonderful majority and their, their faces of, of what I see when we talk about energy loss in America. So anxiety for me is a big tip off in your story. Yes. And we're going to get back to that in a second. Okay. I do think it's part of the reason you feel drained, but there's an important caveat to that. Kathy's story is a little bit different. Take a look at this. All my kids are out of the house and officially I'm an empty nester. I know my children are gone, but did they have to take my energy too? I love that, Kathy. Your kids <laughs> took the energy. So how has your energy been changing? Um, I've noticed since the youngest has moved away from home that I'm tired more often. I was at a point earlier when the kids were at home, everything was great, you're busy, you're moving around all the time. 
you don't have, you can't be tired. Now, five years later, my youngest is gone. She's been gone for a while. I'm tired all the time. My grandkids used to say, Grandma, please call Daddy. I'm tired. I want to go home. Now they're looking at me saying, Grandma, what's wrong with you? Why are you so tired? It's got to be hormones. I'm getting older. I'm changing. It's, it's different. I feel different. I want my energy back. Well, other than the fact that your hormones do change as you get older, mm -hmm. what makes you connect the hormones so clearly to your lack of energy? Well, because I've, I've made changes in, in the way that I do things. I exercise. I've taken fatty foods out of my diet. I'm trying to find the things that bring me energy back, and it's not happening if I take a nap. Let's say that I lay down at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. When I wake up, it's 7.30 the next morning. Uh -huh. That's a major difference. I used to lay down for 30 minutes. Now, if I lay down, my day is over. Yeah, see the whole audience nodding their head up and down. And you've tried a lot of things, obviously, to make it happen. Yes. Let me put all of your energy issues in perspective. And thank you for sharing them with us so honestly. Julie, your lack of energy, and this I think you speak to many of us, uh, cause you to snap at the people you love. Yes. Your kids, your husband, yeah. even people you don't even know on the road. Yeah. The Southern state driving here, <laughs> I swear right? I don't have road rage. <laughs> and, and it makes you moody overall, Yes, right? definitely yeah, makes you moody. And your story's a little different. You yes. say that the way you feel about life, your anxiety, yeah. uh, is what's causing a lot of your energy drain. And you actually yes. start the day off without feeling fully energized. Oh, yeah. I feel like I didn't even sleep. Like you didn't even sleep. Yeah. And Kathy, you say you wake up without energy. And, and I think that a lot of this, although you think it's the hormones, mm -hmm. uh, may be related to factors around the hormones, including the hormones. I mean, okay. age plays a role as well. So right. have, I, have I missed anything? Did I, did I capture most of the stories? Yes. yes. All right. So I want you to yes. join me, if you don't mind, because yes. I'm going to walk you through something. I'm going to show all three of you why your lack of energy may be rooted in the exact same problem. Fair enough? Come on over. So I want you to look at this big wall. And I've written on there energy. And I want this to represent the energy in your body. So, Julie, when you feel stressed out, mm -hmm. you get angry. Yes. Right? Now, it's interesting. When that happens, it's like you're flipping a switch. And that stress switch, when it's flipped on, turns on the energy in your body. And it, in your case, results in some anger because the stress goes with the anger. And that energizes you, causes a chain reaction, but just for a few seconds. Yeah. And then it quickly begins to slip away. Because it turns out that anger, and go ahead and over there, and just go ahead and do that. Pull those plugs out, because you're pulling the plug in your energy when you get angry. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right, now, <laughs> let's shift gears to Anne. You say you start your day off a little bit like this, without fully having the energy you want to have yes. to start off with. Now, it turns out that the anxiety you're feeling in your life mm -hmm. further depletes that problem. They yeah. go together. It's because your mind is like a, a hamster in one of those little wheels. Right. And it's running as fast as it can. And it can't keep up. And it wears you down. So go ahead and pull the plug on your energy. Because that's exactly what anxiety is doing to you. It's the reason you're waking up without feeling fully charged. And when you pull the plug further during the day of being anxious, now you've got just a little bit of energy left at the bottom of your reservoir. Right. Which brings me to Kathy, who, who says that she also wakes up with not much energy. Right. <laughs> feeling like this. And you have little no energy in part because of the hormones, and I think you're absolutely right about that. So right. go ahead and show me how hormones pull the plug on your energy and leave you with no energy None. whatsoever. Right. I'm tackling this topic today because it's a topic you have written me about the most this year. And this is exactly why it's such a big issue, because all of your problems are ones we all have. Right? We all have a little bit of stress in our life with anger that results. We all have some anxiety when we worry about stuff. We all have changes that are happening in our body, right. some from hormones and some from other factors that aren't so predictable. Right? And if it wasn't for your kids, and if it wasn't for your, your, your anxiety, and it wasn't for your hormones, the question is, would your energy be better? And I do think it might be a bit better, but there's something much larger even out there that most of us have missed. One fix that could help all three of your energy problems, and you could start using it today to get re-energized today. Are you ready? All right. It's all about this. Magnesium. Magnesium. Look at that carefully. Now, you may not think it's a big deal, but it is. There are over 300, 300 chemical reactions in your body that are dependent on magnesium. And you know what? When it's not working, because mm -hmm. you don't have enough in your body, your body becomes like sludge. Those reactions don't help get the energy you need into the right places. In fact, right. you don't even make the energy. Three out of four of you watching right now across this great country are not getting the amount of magnesium that you need. And you are magnesium deficient. Okay. 
Okay. I'll come back to why that's so in a second. <laughs> now, I gotta say, that number surprised me. Imagine three out of four of us are deficient. It also surprised world expert researchers looking at this topic as well. None of us had any idea it was such a big problem. Mm -hmm. And having low energy levels is perhaps the strongest indication that you don't have adequate magnesium levels. Having okay. lots of stress, having the inability to get the things done in your life, not having the pep that you had right. with your grandkids anymore, yes. not being able to keep up with the anxiety that you had before the kids, right. but just gets worse. It all just adds up, including the road rage on this other state. <laughs> all right, but let's, let's look at some other signs of magnesium deficiency. I'm just curious if you can find yourself in these signs. All right, the first one is irritability. Yeah, that would be me. Right. <laughs> Second big sign of magnesium deficiency is anxiety. Okay, yes. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine having a simple thing like that causing so much of the headache that you're having in life? And the third is lethargy. Just to get yeah. up and go, Kathy. Yes. So you've tried a lot of things, but, but unfortunately, at the end of it all, sometimes you've got some fundamental things that we overlook. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question now. When you get anxious, right. tell me what happens in your body. What does it feel like? My heart starts to pound. My hands get clammy. I feel like I can't put a thought together. Everything's going so fast for me. Pitter-patter, pitter-patter. Yes. Okay. Let's take a step over here. I've got a cool little demonstration that might explain why that could be magnesium deficiency. Now, part of the reason magnesium is so important for energy is that if you don't have enough, your body can't breathe. Okay. It can't process stuff. So go help me with this if you don't mind, Julie. Un unscrew that. Now, your body naturally all day long is using up its magnesium. It's got to use it for all kinds of processes. You pee it out. You use it in chemical reactions that I talked about earlier. When that happens, you move from the green area into the red area. And anxiety is one of those signs again. Imagine this, okay. the magnesium goes so low that you no longer have what you need in your body. Your right. body tries to store it, but it can't keep up. When it gets to a certain layer, something bad happens. You get okay. into a danger spot because your heart can't keep up. Now, your heart normally only has to beat at a certain pace. Okay. When your level drops too low, it's got to go fast like this. Pitter-patter, 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 and bam! You're back on that hamster wheel we talked about earlier, and of course, You'll feel that in your body. Your body's crying to you for help, yes. but you, we've not been able until today to listen and hear what it was really trying to tell us, to interpret what that sign meant to us. Studies actually have shown that when you don't have adequate magnesium levels, even a little bit of activity, like running after your kids, right. will get your heart to pump faster, and because of that, your body is struggling to get more blood into it. Yes, that's how I feel. I feel, very, yeah. I feel like I can't catch my breath or anything. I get very anxious. So, I want you to remember this. Now, the question is, what, what are you going to do about it? Well, obviously, to get your energy going, you need some magnesium. Okay. So go ahead and pour that in there. As you pour magnesium back into your body, and this N is your body, you will rebuild those stores, take yourself out of the red zone of depletion where most of us live today and into that robust area of greenness where we don't feel the signs of the anxiety or the lethargy or the, the irritability. Now, there's a point I got to make here. It's really important. Okay. To do this, you've got to do it consistently during the day. Okay. So, Kathy, you said you've done just about everything. Yes. I mean, you certainly listed off a cascade of events. Do you yes. take a multivitamin as part of your routine? I do. I you take don't. a multivitamin. I've okay. not checked the magnesium level, but I take one. Very smart of you to say that, because this is really cool okay. once you understand it. It turns out you can't take magnesium once a day. Hmm. And, and most multivitamins aren't going to have a lot of it in there anyway, because it makes the pill too large to okay. put magnesium in there. So you have to take magnesium in food. It is the best way to maintain your reservoirs because you eat food all day long, right? Most of us. Yes. But you got to eat the right kinds of food. Before we get started, let me ask all three of you, Julianne and Kathy, you eat three balanced meals a day? No. 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 And why not? Why don't you? I don't have a second to spare getting the three of them ready. There's no way. <laughs> Same thing. I just don't make time because I'm so busy. I'm in the house alone. I don't need to cook three times a day anymore. That's right. <laughs> well, the don't. kids are gone. That's right. Come to my house and cook. Right. 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 It's important your diet contains the proper amount of magnesium. So to get your daily amount of magnesium, all you've got to do is use my magnesium must-have grocery list. So I want you to eat five servings, any five servings, of these magnesium-rich foods throughout the day to get the daily magnesium that you need. I'll go through it real quick. A half a cup of spinach, a half a cup of quinoa, a, cu a cup of brown rice, a cup of black beans, uh, kidney beans, lentils, raisin bran, shredded wheat, oatmeal. Two slices of bread will get you there if they're whole wheat, and, or two bananas. So I want you each to pick the foods that you love the most. Right? And as you do that, let me give a couple tips to everybody. Go ahead and go ahead and pick what you want. You don't want to eat them all in one meal. That's really critical because, again, you won't have it in the, in the rest of the day. You can get just one food five times a day if you really want to do it uh, that way. Or you can get five different foods, but you've got to spread it out across the day to do it right. 
right? And so you've all chosen what you love? Mm-hmm. So you've only chosen two foods. Yeah. So you're going to eat these all day long. Pretty much, yeah. All, right. all day long. That, that, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. We can all do that. Uh, one thing I want to point out, you know, is again, if you, can, if you can diversify, it might make life more fun, but two foods are fine. You can just spread them up during the day. Um, I, I notice here, uh, and you don't, you don't have a breakfast food. No. Yeah. One little tip again, when you pick your magnesium foods, mm-hmm. at least get one food that could be breakfast. Okay. And then get started in the right direction. And then Kathy did a great job there. It's all easy to spread out. You've got to take these for a week. It's my only request of you. Do this for a week. It takes a week to rebuild your energy stores, to, to recharge those, those chemical systems that have shut down, those 300 systems dependent on your magnesium. And if you do that, uh, then you'll be able to go where you need to go. So I've got gifts for you because I can't do it all. I won't be there with you all the time, but I don't want you to mess this up. So I'm going to be with you in spirit. Okay, okay, here we go. Next time you're driving along in the oh, southern God. state, and you get angry in the car, right? <laughs> I'm going to have these little pictures of me. You're going to attach these to your rearview mirror as a reminder to take your magnesium. Yes. Right? To keep you calm. <laughs> and the next time you feel anxious with the kids, I've got four of them as a dad. Now, my kids have been horrified by this. And this is a reminder to take your magnesium. And finally, Kathy, first thing in the morning and last thing at night. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on new videos to live the good life.